So what we'll do now is we'll have um, Dave, Dave Green talk about some um, Stratos School project. Um, I think Graham would take your session after lunch, if that's okay. Graham. Sorry, that's Graham. Oh, there he is. So, okay. Yes, yeah. Well. Yeah. Because otherwise we'll be delayed to lunch yeah. too much, and I think that's surely that's on everybody's on everybody's mind. So you've got a um, your dongle, Dave. Uh, we'll put that in just in case. Or um, do you want to run it from the? No, we'll run it from there. I'll we'll just run it from there. I'll, I'll, I'll run it from this then. Is that okay? Yep. Let's switch that. Bingo. So, um, yeah, you know, usual white. Right yes, please. Yeah. yeah, I need that. Okay. Let's clip it on. Good afternoon. Um, from the sublime to the ridiculous, I think. Even though I'm a physics teacher, I'm not going to talk anything about physics and technology at all. Um, and we're definitely going to be less than an hour because I've got to get to Memphis in about an hour and a quarter's time <laughs> to see a show. Um, have I got any teachers in the, in the room? So, a couple, okay. So hopefully the word STEM is familiar with you and, and a lot of you may have heard uh, the word STEM. It stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths. Uh, there's a new sort of acronym um, uh, what's the word? Five letter acronym, I suppose, called STEAM, which uh, recognizing that engineering is a very creative process. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a bit about inspiring or trying to encourage uh, secondary students in a sort of standard secondary high school uh, to get more interested in STEM subjects and uh, you know, hopefully take on engineering and maths and technology type uh, careers to help you know, the UK's economy and so on in the future. Um, so, as I say, I'm a, uh, a science teacher. I teach physics. I did a physics degree, which eventually came in useful because I did a career change from uh, working for BT, where I knew Steve a bit. I can't remember how, how our paths crossed. Um, and uh, about seven years ago, I retrained as a, a science teacher. So, um, probably the hardest thing I've ever done, but certainly the most rewarding and best thing I've ever done. Um, so, I now run a Space Club which is, is deemed to be a little bit geeky and so on, but something like uh, using high altitude ballooning uh, even persuades some of the more sort of uh, um, students who think that's all a bit uncool to be part of something called Space Club. So I'm going to talk about high altitude ballooning as a way of really getting uh, students interested and getting them kind of engaged in, in, in technology, basically, and engineering. I um, won't bother with that YouTube uh, link. I think we'll go straight on. So... Why high altitude ballooning? Why choose high altitude ballooning? Apart from the fact that I knew Steve, I suppose. Um, <coughs> and we have the next, next slide. Oh, going to do it. Um, well, interestingly, it does attract boys and girls. Although I guess there are about two girls in this audience. <laughs> um, two and a half is uh, a young yeah. girl up in the bottom. Um, I, I, with Space Club, with something like high altitude ballooning, I suppose when I started it up, there were virtually ninety-five percent. Boys, I think I might have had one girl. Um, but when we did, we called it the Stratus program. We did Stratus 1, 2, and 3, which I'll just talk a little bit about. All, all three were high altitude balloon projects that Steve was uh, uh, supporting, was you know, largely responsible for getting it going, as it were, and we're doing the actual launches. Um, so it does attract boys and girls. So uh, when we did Stratus 3, which I'll talk a bit about, um, though we had took about, it must have been four or five, I think, in the minibus. Mm -hmm. Um, Space Club is probably 17 or 18 kids um, every Thursday, and I'm getting five or six girls coming along, which is really, um, really good. So it does attract boys and girls. Um, and something like high altitude ballooning as a project does get them really excited, and you can, there are a lot of roles for students, so it's not just the techie bit, um, perhaps about perhaps soldering up um, a tracking board or, or uh, getting involved in the design of the payload or something, um, you can get, you know, somebody's organising the hoodies. I was going to wear the latest hoodie today, but it's way too hot to wear a hoodie. Um, and there's all sorts of, for example, um, some of the, the boys and the girls went out into their primary schools where they've just come, from, you know, come up to secondary school and they were doing presentations to the primary school. So we were kind of linking in with the primary school. So, okay, let's so have the next one then. Um, so just to sort of develop that theme, here are some of the things that uh, the students do. Um, 
If you're interested, uh, you can go on to KHS Space Club YouTube. So those of you who already got your PCs open, if you go onto YouTube and do KHS Space Club, uh, you see we've got a uh, YouTube channel, which I had nothing to do with. I didn't have a clue how to set up a YouTube channel, but one of the year 10s did. Um, uh, and really, as a science teacher, um, you know, you don't have to know much about this stuff. You just need to uh, try and get the kids interested enough to do some of it, and you need an expert. Um, and really, you just act as a facilitator to really get it going. We uh, did a live broadcast of both Stratus 2 and Stratus 3. Stratus 2 was just to get some pictures back. Stratus 3 was to break the world record for, a, um, for the highest launch of a paper plane, which is currently with Guinness World Records for verification. <laughs> Does anybody here actually provide... Did anybody here monitor yes, the flight? Yes, So thanks very much, guys, <laughs> especially if you did one of those um, witness statements. Um, so the, the kids organised a uh, broadcast live of, um, of Stratus 3 and of Stratus 2. Um, again, nothing to do with me. They, they did it all and talked with the music department and got a fancy microphone and all that kind of stuff. Um, we had hoodies. We had the outreach uh, talks to the primary schools I mentioned. Um, building the prototype payload, although for Stratus 3, um, we didn't really have somebody with enough... Um, sort of capability to, to, to build a decent payload, I guess. But for Stratus 2, it was the one that the kids built, um, including the camera. Um, uh, there's all the stuff like communications, going into assemblies and getting the kids to stand up in front of their peers and talk about what they're doing. Um, on, for Stratus 3, which is the world record attempt for the release of a paper plane, um, one of our year ten, my year 10 students did a whole lot of data analysis. I can't remember. Right. Well, actually, we've got the clip, so we might right. as well show it, might not we? Let's right. so see if it works. <laughs> Do you recognise that face? <laughs> yeah. So if we perhaps just drag it on a, on a bit. On a bit. Um, somewhere, somewhere a bit exciting. So yeah, that'll do. Launch. Oh, there's the plane release. Really. Do you want to show the real plane release? Yeah, just plane about release, there. Yeah. No, just before. Go back a bit. Before. Uh, about there. No, a bit, bit left, a bit left. Bit le oh, no, yeah, sorry. Keep going. Right, 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 right. Stop. Go. So there's the plane. Oh, there you go. So there's the plane launch. 35 kilometers up, world record. But what um, the year 10 student did was take all that data on whatever format it was. Yeah. Um, again, nothing to do with me. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so he built a little um, altitude thingy and speed and so on. In fact, this is great for um, teaching. I'm going to use this um, when we talk about you know, talking about acceleration due to gravity and that kind of stuff. So, um, and he, he added some, although there was a few typos we had to change, but um, he added some commentary to it as well. So you know, he's, he was analysing the data. And one of the things he could do with this kind of analysis and so on is make it into a CREST project. So I don't know if anybody... There's a teacher here who knows about CREST, but CREST is a science and engineering sort of award that they can go for. It's a bit like Duke of Edinburgh for technology and science and maths. Um, and by doing something like that and talking about it, um, he could develop that into a CREST project, get, in the, uh, get a certificate for it and so on. So, um, you know, he's, he's done that analysis and that, that's something that he did. Um, we've submitted that as part of the Guinness World Records um, submission. So there he goes. And, and in fact, it was close to 10 metres per second per second, looking at the data. Oh. Although the data is, I know, is a bit plus or minus, as it were. Oh. But, um, uh, so we had two GoPro cameras. This was Stratus 3, one pointing down when the plane was released, and one looking at the view. Um, OK, so if we... Uh, Anything else for me? No, I think we'll go back to the uh, PowerPoint. Yeah, we definitely don't want that bit. <laughs> I'm glad you're operating this, not me. I don't know where they are. Lost. PDF. That's me. Probably in SLS being previewed. Oh, there you go. Okay, so the other thing I probably I think we've mentioned most, I think with Stratus 2, which was the objective was just to get some um, data back, uh, sorry, some pictures back um, from the edge of space, which you know really, really excites the kids and 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 the teachers in, in the school, it's like, wow, how did you do that? And, you know, it's a great topic of conversation. Um, 
Stratus 2, one of the students in year 12s um, constructed the, uh, the tracker, um, obviously to a um, design that Steve has, uh, had done. But um, modifying the camera, we had to get the camera to take pictures every 10 seconds, and we did some video, and that was in Stratus 2. Um, and films of the project. So uh, we've had a, a really excellent Stratus 2 film. Um, it was really very good. And Aisha, who is uh, year 13, this, this year she did a really good job, and if you've seen it, uh, the Stratus 3 film, uh, which we'll perhaps have a little clip of in a minute. I think there's a couple of, yeah, shall we, if we go on the, perhaps just show a, an one? example. We'll go on both, but go on the first one, yeah. Nine minutes in. Well, we'll just start at the beginning, just to okay. see the, uh, I think the beginning sort of sets the context. So yeah. this is Stratus 2. Not the most animated of the. <laughs> but actually, that guy's doing astronomy at uh, Aberystwyth University. So it's... Anyway, so he talks a bit about that, and then we go. If you go nine minutes in, there's a bit about me saying, "Why are we doing this? You know, why, why have this project? What's the advantage to the kids, and so on?" Um, that'll do. Just leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> got some ads on it, but never mind. <laughs> Can you get the volume up a bit? It must be. Will that turn the volume up? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, so this is me saying, why are we doing this? Yeah, it's on there. Yeah. So, not fantastically clear pictures, but for the kids, this was incredibly exciting getting this stuff back. Train, that's the guy. Very, yeah. very talented. Incredibly talented. And if we go back, we can click on the link to the. Um, yeah, the we'll one. just show the other one. That one there? Yeah, from the back. 12 minutes in? Yeah, yeah we've got. Oh, we've got, we've got that horrible thing again. <laughs> so this is Aisha, um, who did. Uh, actually, she's just won a scholarship with Rolls Royce. She's going to work for Rolls Royce in a month's time. Isn't um, undergraduate apprentice or whatever they call it. So I'll do. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so this is Steve's front seat <laughs> and his laptop. Does that look and sound familiar? <laughs> So this is the exciting moment where we saw both of the, um, the icons separate, so we knew the plane had uh, been launched. See the, there we go. and the the plane was uh, found right at the last moment. The plane actually flew and it did glide about 20 miles or 25 miles away from where the main payload landed. So it really did fly really well. But dead lucky to get it, weren't we? Yeah, but... So this is, that's uh, Ben who's going on to university to do computing. So they're searching for the plane.
you know, we had a competition for the plane, best plane design. But you can see, the, just get a flavour of all the people who are involved in, in such a project. Okay. And next slide. Okay, so just, just to finish off really, what, what were the sort of challenges and rewards as a teacher trying to do this kind of stuff? Um, well, first of all, the rewards are seeing students engaged. Uh, the membership of Space Club has, has grown a lot. I mean, you've probably seen it as well and yeah. you've come along occasionally. Um, just by having such an exciting project, um, you've got people coming along and they're really interested. And the primary school kids who have come up and saw the presentation from Stratus 2 saying, oh, I want to join Space Club because so I saw that presentation. Um, from a teacher's point of view, it's quite a load. So I started it as an NQT, and uh, that, that, I can tell you, was really hard doing an NQT and running a club as well. Um, but it gets easier, and um, but you are juggling you know, the time. You're there to, to, to teach and, and deliver exciting lessons, um, but uh, running an extra after-school club is, is an extra load, but the rewards are, uh, are there. Um, there is definitely an excitement and buzz around the school. Um, that we did experience failure, so Stratus 1, that we used uh, um, a GPS device that turned out, I think, we, or I think you discovered that it had switched itself off because of the GPS chip has to above 80,000 feet or something. You know, the Amer American Defense Department have said it's got to switch off in case it's used by China as a ballistic missile or something. But the thing that didn't switch itself back on, so we didn't actually find it. A farmer found it, and then it discovered the camera had failed as well. But from failure grew success. Stratus 2, they did some presentations in primary school. At the back of the primary school was a, a guy who worked for BT, and he said, hey, come and we'll do, we'll, we'll do a, um, a design and development workshop. Oh, well, his name escapes me, the buzzword for the workshop. Do you know what they're called? Anyway. Hot house, thank you. Um, so the kids had a, a day at BT, at Astral Park, doing a hot house. It was fantastic for them. Um, <coughs> talked about attracting some girls. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, it's anecdotal, I suppose. You can't prove that it, is, it has made kids think about engineering as a, as a or, or engineering type st studies at sixth form and, and beyond. But, uh, um, it certainly can't do any harm, let's put it that way. Um, I think that might be it. Let's just see if there's any other. No? Yeah, okay. So uh, I had a few pictures, but I, don't think, I think we're definitely just about out of time. Any questions? Yeah. What was your own sort of time scale when you first proposed the project to the students to when you actually managed to launch it first? Oh, there's a good question. Um, so I guess Stratus 1 was probably a, a year ish. Yeah. And I guess they were all actually that sort of... I, if you take Stratus 3, the plane... So actually, st it was Steve's idea to go for the records. He knew about the record for a paper plane drop and thought it would be a rather an exciting thing to try and get a school to do it and, and see if we could beat the world record. So I guess from the initial ideas, if you go on the um, YouTube channel, KHS Space Club, you'll see my introduction that I talk about the things we do at Space Club. And then there's another clip where Steve and I are standing together talking. And I think that was probably a year and a half, maybe, or certainly. So it's that sort of time period, I suppose, because you're trying to get the kids interested. What you don't want to do is, as a teacher, is really the kids are just watching and you're doing it all. And was, other schools have done this. A lot of schools have done this stuff now, and you, you know, see, see it uh, quite often. But some of them, it's really the technician or it's the teacher It's doing it all, and the kids are just watching. The, from my point of view, the, the, that ain't going to work. I'm not interested in doing that. I want the kids to do as much as possible. And sometimes, with Stratus 2, we had probably a little bit more, um, a few kids that were a bit more technically minded who could do more of the te technology. But, yeah, I guess that sort of time period. Does this mean that uh, you, know, sort of, uh, you would have failures? Um, you know. <coughs> Uh, 
this is obviously an acceptable cost of, of getting the kids involved. Yeah, well, in terms of failure, as I say, Strasbourg one, we did fail. We didn't get pictures back from the edge of space, and lots of disappointment. We sat by a road in Fetford Forest waiting for a, a text from the GPS tracking device, and it never came. And you know, it was a bit of a that was a real down a moment for the for the kids. But then the next year, we did, as I say, we we kicked off Stratus two, and, and uh, so that I, you know, I think failure is a good thing for the kids to learn, and then. Improve. So. Yeah, I was a STEM ambassador for four years, so I, right. I think I got too old for the kids. But okay, but anyway. <laughs> um, no. How did you how did you fund this? This is exactly what we're trying to do, and we're trying to get a school involved, maybe, and mm -hmm. um, we can fund some of it ourselves, obviously. But I just wanted get to kids to raise some money. Um, kids to raise the money. Well, they raised some of it. Uh, I, we got one um, governor who worked for IBM. We managed to get a bit of money from them. But I mean, the overall cost, that reminds me, we haven't paid you yet. We still no. need to start <laughs> three. Um, <laughs> keep reminding you. Um, but you are talking, well, I don't know how much we're we talking. Probably two or 300 quid, aren't we? 300 quid, perhaps. Um, and, and most schools could probably raise that in terms of get the kids, but, but absolutely get, try and get the kids to try and raise some money or tap up the, the um, governors or whatever. You know, you get, you, you'll, you'll be amazed where you can probably get your 100 quid from. You can apply, there are various grants that schools can apply for, which I did apply for one, but it wasn't successful. But, um, uh, but yeah, you try and get the kids. If it's two or 300 quid, then most schools, especially if the kids are involved in raising the money and so on. Yeah, you know, are, well, that's the big issue with all, st all these projects. I mean, I, um, you've got to find a teacher or a, a, a governor who's, that's your, what you, that's your way in. You've got to get a teacher involved who's interested and has got the time and the bandwidth to do it, if you like. Um, otherwise, um, you know, it's always going to be a bit of a struggle. Unless you've got a lot of time, you could, I mean, a friend of mine did run an electronics club at the school on, on that. Um, and he, at the time, was working for BT. He ran an electronics club as an afternoon, afternoon thing sorry, after school thing, um, and you know, several kids came to it. So you could run a high altitude balloon club or something, and, and as long as you've got a teacher who's at least interested, even if they don't have to do very much, um, whereas uh, you know, I'm a little bit more hands-on. But I think the key is you do need a teacher involved because you're going to need to get the school, you know, you, you, if you're going to get hoodies, if you're going to get them going into primary schools, if you're going to get them publicity, you're going to get a YouTube or a website, and, you know, you need to understand how the school's infrastructure works a bit, I think. Or, so via a governor or a teacher, I think, is, is getting, getting them involved in some way. Desperate for lunch, everybody, now. Any other questions? Okay, okay. thanks very much. <laughs>